Hey everybody, welcome to our Zoom chat. Um, I'm Emily Roberts. I'm a diamond ambassador with Plexus Worldwide. And next door, you see Jennifer Brett. She is a 27 year old senior Ruby ambassador on my team. And we are super excited to share with you a little bit about relationships and the foundations of them in your network marketing business. Susie McCall, a diamond ambassador, she has shared all these tips and I just love them so much. I called up Jennifer and I'm like, we need to share these with other ambassadors. So that's what we're doing. Um, all Everything you hear today is coming straight from the McCalls. Maybe you've heard of them. Uh, Susie is diamond, like I mentioned, and Chris is an emerald ambassador and they are hilarious and so full of life and she went diamond for a reason and I think these tips are sensational. So a little bit about them before we kind of dive into the key points is when they joined the business, they had never in a trillion years thought that they were going to work a business out of this. Sound familiar? I don't think any of us ever think that we're in it to work a business. Um, but what she noticed was that when she joined, she, they, were, they had tons of people excited to jump in with them. So they just thought, all these people are going to join my team and take the products, love them, maybe lose weight, maybe find something that it's helping with, and shoot straight to the top as a diamond, right? wishful thinking. That's what we always yeah. want for our team members. Um, but what they found was that it was a little bit deeper than that. Um, these people were joining them, sure, but it came down to trust. These people trusted them to take that leap of faith. And then she kind of took another step back and she looked at all the other diamonds in the company. And what was something unique that they were doing or maybe that they possessed that led them to be a diamond? And she said it all came down to them being smiley, bubbly, people, pleasing people. Um, they were all about relationships. They, they were great with people. And I think that some of us are a little apprehensive when it comes to relationships and people, and we, we have that fear of rejection. And Susie kind of covers that and all of these tips and how to have these relationships within your Plexus business. So I'm going to turn it over to Jennifer and I, I want to, I want you guys to keep an open mind. I want you to grab a pen and paper, sit back and listen to some really awesome advice. Go ahead, Jen. All right, so let's jump into point number one. Um, so your pre-plexus relationships are going to have a huge impact on your initial success with your business. So kind of what does this mean? Um, so if you have great relationships and friendships pre-plexus, it's easy for you to make relationships. They're just, they're going great. Um, people are going to be more apt to jump on board with you. This is going to bring a little bit quicker success in your business. Um, they're going to trust you, maybe not right away, but eventually they will. Um, however, if you have a tendency to fight a lot or lose friendships and just kind of have a rocky path in the friendship relationship department, um, it will take some time to build trust. You'll have to cultivate these relationships as you go. Um, it is not hopeless but you'll just take a little bit more time and your journey might be a little bit slower than some. Absolutely. And it, it's true. Apps. I love that. It's a great tip and you're going to find that on this journey. So uh, it leads perfectly into this second tip. Some of your friends and family are not going to join you in this business. They're just not. And it's super important that you do not internalize this because you're going to. We're human. A lot of us are female. And that's the first thing we jump to that conclusion that it's, they're turned away from us. They don't want a relationship with us. And that is not the case. Um, what you need to do <clears throat> is present the opportunity to them at least once. Share it with them. Let them try that pink drink. But don't hound them about it. Take a step back. Let them watch your journey. Let them see what you're about and how you work your plexus business. Um, sometimes when someone doesn't understand something, they feel threatened. Um, maybe they just need more information. Uh, it could simply be about the timing. And so I want you to understand that six months from now, a year from now, here I am almost two and a half years later, people will join you. They will change their mind. Their timing may be different. So when it comes to your friends and family, do not internalize them telling you not right now or maybe no. Instead, follow up with them later or let them watch your journey. Um, I think it's really important that we don't burn bridges in our family and our friendships, kind of like Jen mentioned, when we burn those bridges or we're, we're best friends one week and then we break up the next week, um, people are going to see that. It also reflects of you and your leadership skills in your business. So if you're best friends with someone one week on Facebook and then the next week they notice that y'all aren't friends anymore and there's super passive aggressive posts, things like that, 
it's going to reflect badly on you. Um, you want people to know that you're a person of integrity and your friends and family, they come first. Don't put your business before that. <clears throat> All right, Jen, go ahead and lead us to the next one. And I love that because I was, you know, I was not on board initially and I eventually came around with Emily. Um, I was one of her biggest skeptics actually. So we always come around, right? Um, so a little more about friends and family before we move on is that not only will some not join you on this journey, some that you're expecting to be your biggest cheerleaders might not be at all. Um, I personally, and Susie mentioned this in her training as well, have spent so many hurt feelings trying to figure this out and trying to figure out why some people who play such a pivotal role in our everyday lives or we just feel like should really be our biggest cheerleaders might not be happy for you in this business. Um, but a conclusion that I've come to and that Susie McCall came to is that really it's not our problem, it's theirs. Um, you know, we can't control their feelings and we can't control that. And we also can't always figure it out and that's okay. Um, but one thing to take away from this is just know that, you know, you will owe it or not that anyways, she says that one thing that she will do is always be happy for her friends and family's success. Um, she basically, and I've done the same thing has just taken it as a learning opportunity of how not to act when somebody that she loves or knows start something that they're successful in or that they're excited about just support them and love on them even if maybe you're not getting those feelings returned maybe if you're not getting that love um returned back to you so that's absolutely um i think we've we've mentioned this before in other calls it's it's kind of like choosing joy you know they may not approve of you they might not return that success favor but that's okay you bless and release right and just keep being awesome and keep sharing consistently um this this leads me into top top um uh, topic number four you have to stay interested in your non-plexus peeps your non-plexus friends, um, those family members that aren't on board, you have to nourish those relationships. And this is the thing. When we stop um, asking how they're doing, we stop checking in on them, um, seeing how, that, how their pregnancy is going, or congratulate them on a wedding, whatever it is, when we stop doing it, they stop doing it. They stop checking in on us. And sometimes you think, you know, well, they never say hi to me. They, the phone goes to both ways. I know it goes to both ways, but let me tell you, it's worth it to nourish the relationship now because this person may be your rock star one day and it might be just in their timing. So here is an easy tip that Susie shares. When it comes to your Facebook friends, you have the option to separate all of your friends list and make a non-plexus friends list so that you can specifically click on this group of friends every day, um, every week, every month, whatever your preference and go specifically log in, click on their Facebooks, check on them, message them, comment on their posts, their pictures. It's a way for you to just go straight to them. It's kind of like an um, uh, easier way instead of going through your phone and texting 45 different people at once. You have them all right there on Facebook. Now, um, everyone friends a bunch of Plexus people usually right when they join. Um, that's totally fine. I love it. I love the one Plexus. I love the camaraderie. However, your Facebook is going to be full of Plexus posts. Now, again, not a bad thing. That, that helps us with our belief. But you can unfollow those Plexus people because you know their stuff's going to pop up all the time. And instead, go make sure you're following all those non-Plexus people. So you're intentionally seeing their posts and reaching out and loving on them. And you don't forget about them. Right. No, I love that. Um, it, it really is an intentional thing that we have to stay not so wrapped up in plexus and remember all of our pre-existing relationships it's so key um so what about those family and friends that do join you on this on this journey um so do we do anything special with them susie says yes absolutely and i think we can all agree stay true to that friendship never lose sight of that don't make it all plexus all the time that's going to turn them off of plexus that's going to probably cause them to turn their backup order off. And more importantly, above everything else, it's probably going to turn them off of your friendship. And that is the last thing we want. Um, we don't ever want a plexus business or any other matter to overrun our personal relationships and our personal happiness, you know, with the people that we love. 
So Susie shares five key pointers on helping with those who we already had a relationship with who do join us on this journey. And number one, do not try and manage them. This is really, really important. Um, number two, do not smother them. Number three, do not compete with them. Let's remember that we're on this journey with them. We're not competing with anybody. Um, number four, don't let them, don't make them feel less than. That's the worst feeling in the world. I don't, my best friend could join me tomorrow and I don't care what my rank is. I am, Emily doesn't care. It, it, nobody is less than anybody. It, we're all on our own journeys and we're all at our own points. Um, and number five, be their friend first and their sponsor second. Don't ever get those mixed up. Don't ever lose your priorities in that. I love those. And they're so true. Um, I kind of want to go back to, to the first one of not managing them. Do you want your friends to manage you? Do you want to be told how to work your business, how to incorporate it into your daily life? You want tips and tricks to, to learn how to fit it into the nooks and crannies, but you don't want a drill sergeant in your ear. You don't want a boss. We join Plexus to be our own boss. So think about that when you have a bestie join you or when your mom joined your team. I love, I love that Susie laid it out because these are things that we do on accident and we don't even realize it. And then we wonder, man, my best friend would have been so great at this. Why did they go inactive? Why, what's going on? What happened? It's usually, no matter what, goes back to the relationship and that trust is lost somewhere along the way. So it's important that we get that back. Um, most of the time we are super thrilled that our best friend, that our family member has joined us. But the only way that you can do this plexus thing together and have a blast is if you don't do those things that Jennifer mentioned. You want, you want it to be not a job. You don't want it to be work. You want it to be a good time, an enjoyable experience, a lifestyle that the two of y'all can do together and have no shame in sharing it with everybody. Um, you want to go Emerald together. You want to go pick out those Plexus Lexuses together. Lexi, Lex I don't know what the pro is about. <laughs> you want to do those things together, and that's why they chose you. That's why they joined your team, because they see them going to the top with you. So take these tips today, write them down, share them with your team, and most of all, duplicate them and help everyone in your downline to understand that relationships matter. This is relationship marketing. Um, we can't say it enough. This is, this is a friendship marketing. This is mother-daughter marketing. This is father-son marketing. We all do it together, and if those relationships are lost, that trust is broken, then we just become salespeople. We don't become sharers. So remember that, and um, thank you for tuning in.